Welcome to another installment of MR2 Spider for Dummies. This means you. Just kidding. Uh, in this installment, we're going to cover removing the transmission. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to make removal of the transmission so incredibly easy you won't even believe it. Okay, we're going to start by covering what holds the transmission in place. There are two bolts on the top side of the bell housing. Okay, this bolt and the other one is right there. You can see it. Okay, these are M12 by 1.25 bolts. Before we do anything, okay, we're going to remove these bolts and we're going to replace them with these little gizmos. These are bolts that I've cut off the heads and then I've tapered the ends where I cut off the head. And you will see shortly why uh, these are being used. So let's put these in place and we'll continue. So I've put these uh, studs in place. You can see the two studs to replace the two M12 bolts. Another thing you can see is that with the taper on the end of these studs, it's possible to fit a little socket on them and turn them to thread them in or thread them out. Okay, so that's one of the things that we did when we prepared these studs is we tapered them so that a little socket will fit over the end so we can thread them in and thread them out. Okay, next we're going to go underneath the car and show you the remaining bolts that hold the transmission to the block. We are underneath the car now. We're going to look at what holds the transmission and the, and the block together. We've already removed the starter. So, and refer to the removal starter video for that. So we have one, two, these are M10 bolts. And then we have two more, which are the flywheel cover bolts. And they are M8 bolts. And that's it. So let's remove these and we'll see where we stand. We've removed the remaining bolts, the two M10 bolts the two M8s and in fact when we did this you can see that the transmission has already broken loose from the block so now it is just hanging on those studs that we put in place on top as well as the output shaft or input shaft rather okay so um, it's uh, completely free and ready to go we're gonna go back on top and uh, see how we can remove it and dislodge it. Up on top and you can see that I've set up this engine support. Okay so this engine support is a pretty cheap tool. It's something that you can get for less than 50 bucks at a lot of stores. And if you don't want to make the investment in this then you can just use um, like a 4x4 four four and some long threaded rod or something. I don't know if you're that. But you know what? You're going to spend as much money on that junk and lumber as you would buying this tool. So just buy this tool, okay? And uh, I've used like a little snap link right here. And, uh, and a short length of chain. And I've used this, uh, this support point, this ear in the engine. And this is uh, designated for this use. You can check that in the repair manual, the BGB Big Green Book. It tells you that this is for the purpose of supporting the engine when you're removing the transmission. So what I've gotten done is I turn this, add tension to it, enough tension, okay, so that I've taken the weight off of the transmission mount completely. And now I can loosen the transmission mount and the uh, engine and transmission will be supported by this engine support, okay? And by the way, I just wanna note that uh, the two front and rear mounts have been removed already. So the only things that are supporting the engine at this point are the transmission mount, the engine mount on this side, and this engine support bar will be taking up the load when we remove this mount. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've uh, completely removed this transmission mount. 
going to put it out of the way. And next, we're going to remove the bracket from the transmission so that it is no longer in the way either. Okay, because this thing can have a terrible way of getting in the way of everything. So we're going to remove it. And also I want to show you one more thing, which is I put a floor jack right underneath the transmission to support it as a backup. Because although I don't think the transmission is going to go anywhere, as a backup I want to keep it supported with this floor jack. Okay. So let's finish up uh, with that bracket and we'll continue. So the transmission mount and its bracket are gone. The transmission and the engine are supported by the engine mount over in that corner. They're also supported by this engine support bar. Okay, And I have the floor jack underneath as a backup. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to turn this in order to lower the engine. Okay, so I'm just going to turn, 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 and as I turn everything, and I got to give it some slack on the jack, of course. Okay, so it's going to start to move down slowly. Okay, so I'll give it some more turns. Turn, turn. Okay, and you can see that it's moving down. It's moving down. Moving down. Oops, I dropped the wrench. Let's go and get it. I'm gonna reposition this. Yeah, reposition. Okay. Let me get the crescent wrench. Let's go back here. We're going to turn, just turn slowly, everything is coming down. Okay, and we have to turn it so it drops down low enough, okay, and just did, just dropped down low enough so that the fifth and sixth gear cover is going to be able to clear the wheel well. Because if we don't have that, if it does not clear the wheel well, and I'm releasing the jack a little bit more. Let's see what's going on. Oh, the jacks are already all the way down. Okay. So we want the we want the transmission fifth and sixth gear cover to clear the wheel well. Okay, and it's almost clear. So if we lower it just a little bit more, we'll be able to pry this gap here and push the transmission out onto these sliders and we have something, we'll have something underneath that it can gently slide down onto. Okay, so let's continue with that. Okay, so I got it lowered down about as far as I want. I could lower it down a little bit more. And I've taken an old like shopping cart and I positioned it underneath it so I can slide it down onto this little rolling platform. Okay, and you can use a furniture dolly or whatever else you want. Doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm going to show you a little bit how easy it is to just pry this out. I've got a pry bar here. Okay, pry bar. Just going to put it in the gap between the transmission and the block. And I'm just going to like pry it out. And you see how easy it is 
to move it, okay? So it's sliding on those rails. I didn't even grease them. Maybe if I'd greased them, it'd be a little bit easier. But it's not even necessary to do that because um, it's just like sliding out on its own. Now I don't want it to drop, so I'm gonna be careful. And uh, I'm gonna, I still got like a little bit to clear here with the rails. Okay, but I'm going to start to support it a little bit better so it does not fall off. Okay, so you can see here's one of the dowels. The dowels are out. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't, I don't know. But uh, it's, it's almost free. All we got to do now is support it a little bit and slide it right off these rails. So with just a little push, the transmission came off of these rails, came off of the rails, the two rails that we put in, it just landed right onto the cart, and uh, uh, it's uh, good to go, it's out of there. Now, to put it back on, what we would do is we would lower everything down, we would match up the two holes in the transmission to these rails again, match up the holes in the bell housing to the rails, push it on slightly, and then uh, just let those two rails take the weight of the transmission while we wiggle it in, while we wiggle the input shaft into the uh, uh, center of the flywheel. All right. So maybe I'll do that in a video a little bit later. Alright, so the transmission is out. You can see this nice clutch. Uh, and uh, I can just wheel it out of here now. Um, so although I've used a lift, I've used a scissor lift here, I did not do anything that requires the use of a lift. And I did this on purpose because I know that most of you do not have a lift. All right, so everything I did as far as positioning the car, you could have done with just jack stands and, uh, and floor jacks, right? So the uh, rear cross member is still in. You could have used that for jacking up and elevating the rear of the car. And then, uh, you know, you could have done everything that I've done without the use of a lift and I did this uh, deliberately so so you can see clear to how you would do it without using a lift. Okay so there's our transmission hope this helps you and uh, that's it for another video.